A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, the branch of the Lord will be luster and glory, and the fruit of the earth will be honor and splendor for the survivors of Israel. He who remains in Zion and he who is left in Jerusalem will be called holy. Everyone marked down for life in Jerusalem. When the Lord washes away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purges Jerusalem's blood from her midst with a blast of searing judgment, then will the Lord create over the whole site of Mount Zion and over her place of assembly a smoking cloud by day and a light of flaming fire by night. For over all, the Lord's glory will be shelter and protection, shade from the parching heat of day, refuge and cover from storm and rain. Verbum Domini. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Because of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will pray for your good. Dominus vobiscum, et cum Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Matthäum. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed 
and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, and no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. Verbum Domini. Considering that Jesus is the Son of God, we might think that very few things, if anything, would amaze him. No one could blame us for thinking this way, especially if we look at the number of times recorded in the Gospels where Jesus is amazed by anything. Usually when the word amazed or marveled or wondered is used in the New Testament, it is not Jesus, but the people who see and hear Jesus who are amazed. However, there are two instances where Jesus is described as expressing amazement, and both instances have something in common. And that common denominator is faith. The first instance is found in Mark chapter six, where Jesus goes to his own hometown of Nazareth and encounters a serious lack of faith among those who would have known him during his upbringing. Jesus sees their unbelief and he is amazed by it. As a result, he is unable to perform any money works there, but can only heal a few sick people. The second instance in which Jesus is amazed is found in today's gospel reading concerning his encounter with a centurion who was a commander over a company of 100 soldiers. The centurion tells Jesus that his servant is lying at home paralyzed. Clearly the centurion is hoping that Jesus will heal his servant, even though the centurion is not a Jew. And while the lectionary shows Jesus' response in the form of a statement, he says, I will come and cure him, The original Greek can also be understood as a question. Should I come and cure him? The implication of Jesus's response is that if Jesus comes to the centurion's house, he would be entering the house of a Gentile, which was frowned upon by the Jews at the time. In asking this question, Jesus prompts the centurion to utter his statement of faith that causes Jesus to be amazed. As a centurion, this officer would have enjoyed a social status that is superior to Jesus' status. He, would have easily, he could have easily adopted a condescending attitude towards Jesus, who belonged to a lower social class in the Roman Empire. And yet the centurion takes the path of humility He acknowledges that he, as a Gentile, is unworthy to have a Jew, let alone the Lord Jesus Christ, enter under his roof. He has such confidence in the Lord's power to heal that he believes that Jesus needs to only say the word and his servant will be healed. And the centurion relates to Jesus as a man under authority with others who are under his authority. And so when Jesus utters a word of command, his word is fulfilled, just as the centurion servants fulfill the word of the centurion. And thus the centurion's faith rests entirely on the power of the word of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus hears the centurion's response of faith, He is amazed and exclaims that he has not found such faith in anyone in Israel. This foreigner has managed to amaze the Son of God, which is not an easy achievement. 
As human beings, there are a variety of things that can instill in us a sense of amazement and wonder. We are amazed when we ponder the vastness of the universe, the distance of the stars from the earth, the various colors of the, of the evening sky as the sun sets, the transformation of a caterpillar into a butterfly, the blossoming of a flower, the milestones of growth in the lives of our children, and other phenomena too numerous to mention. As we see in the gospel, <clears throat> that the people who come to Jesus during his public ministry are continually amazed by his wonderful works, his teaching with authority, and his gracious words. It is hard to fathom that the one who created everything, along with the Father and the Holy Spirit, and who can fathom the greatest mysteries of the universe, could experience a sense of wonder and amazement. And yet, it as it says in the fourth Eucharistic prayer at Mass, Jesus shared our human nature in all things but sin. When the Son of God took our human nature upon himself, he was just as capable of feeling amazement as any one of us. And what seems to amaze our Lord Jesus Christ more than anything, is either our faith or our lack of faith. The faith of this centurion was entirely simple and uncomplicated. He did not have the benefit of an education in the Jewish faith, nor did he attend regular synagogue services to hear the readings of the Law and the Prophets. He did not have an, or he did not need an advanced degree in theology to grasp the nature of faith in the Lord. And those of us who have studied the faith for many years t may tend to get lost on the finer points of doctrine or in making proper theological distinctions. And while it can be useful at times to engage in such theological discussions and debates, the centurion is a good reminder that faith is ultimately a very simple exercise. Not everyone has the opportunity or the resources to pursue advanced ecclesiastical degrees. Fortunately, such degrees are not required to have faith. As Jesus himself says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and have revealed them to infants. If Jesus is amazed by the simple faith of this centurion, then he is also amazed by the faith of the elderly woman who is confined to her home and yet prays continuously and offers her sufferings for her family and for the world. By all worldly standards, such a woman may have nothing to offer, yet her faith is powerful enough to move mountains and to cause our Lord to be amazed. If Jesus is amazed by the faith of the centurion, then he is also amazed by the faith of the poor person who is generous with others despite having very little themselves. He is amazed by the faith of a child who prays even when their parents have forgotten to pray or have lost their faith. He is amazed by the faith of the person in prison who perseveres in prayer and charity despite living in difficult and often, oftentimes harsh circumstances. If we wish to amaze God, we can choose to hold on to faith, hope, and love even when it seems that everything is against us. Because like the centurion, we simply trust in the word of Jesus. As we pray every day before receiving Holy Communion, Lord, I am not worthy. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We take on our lips the very words of the centurion and make them our own as we approach our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. And so the question that we might ask ourselves now is, in what ways can we amaze God today by our faith?